What's up, everybody? You're watching B-Boy 45. My name is Chris, hanging out with my good buddy, Maya. And as you know, when it's uh, set up like this, it's a special edition of Maya's latest news to keep you in the groove. So, Maya, why is today special? Um, because Josh Segarra is... Yeah, yeah, Josh Segarra is right there on the screen with us. Woo! Josh Segarra, welcome. Welcome, welcome, Thanks welcome. Thanks a lot, Maya. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. I'm so excited to be talking to you. Oh, that means a lot to me. I'm excited to be talking to you, too. This is awesome. All right, Maya, take it away, my friend. Um, so who or what inspired you to become an actor? Mm. When I was a kid, uh, I, 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 I used to watch a show called All That. And uh, I, I used to watch it as a kid. And it was one of these... I, I felt like it was always there, but I didn't know that I could be an actor one day. You know, I didn't know that I could do that as a dream. I, I used to watch all that as a kid, and actually they're going to reboot it soon. And then I used to watch uh, SNL. And for me, it was just one of those things where I just, I, I realized they were playing tent and telling really cool stories, and that's what inspired me. Cool. So you were um, on Broadway in the musical on your feet um yeah. what was that experience like oh that was so fun i mean for me you know uh i've always dreamed about being on stage I, I did theater in high school too you know i did community theater when i was in middle school and to be on broadway was incredible uh, i i loved i loved doing on your feet you know i felt like i was getting transported back to when i was growing up dancing to some salsa mm -hmm. and and telling the Estefan story and to be on stage, it's the best, you know, and uh, I love making people laugh with me if, you know, if, uh, and, and when you're up there and you feel the energy of the crowd, it just means a lot, you know, and I feel like as an actor, that's where you learn how to act, you know, when you're on stage and you're under the pressure of, of the lights and yeah, it's an incredible experience. Being on Broadway was so fun. Doing on your feet was so fun. Cool. Well, um, so you have a recurring role on the comedy, The Other Two. Yeah. And I, I love that show. It's so funny. Um, <laughs> um, so what's your favorite part about working on that show? Hmm. Probably how funny it is, you know, <laughs> Cause I, because that laughter that you're feeling on that show we're laughing all day long you know we just have so much fun with each other and we get to crack jokes and we just we all become really close there's that and then there's the really cool aspect that you know i live in new york city and to work on a show that shoots all throughout new york that 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 i get to shoot on on the brooklyn bridge and i'm shooting at rockefeller center all these places that i walk through every day so to get to shoot there Oh, man, I feel like I'm part of the makeup of the city. I feel like I'm part of its DNA. So it's very cool. Oh, cool. Um, okay, so you played Marco in the Moody's Christmas. <laughs> and I, um, I loved that show. And I was so upset that I was only on for three nights because I got really attached to it. Um, <laughs> so I was really sad when it ended. Um, so uh, do you have any fun stories or memories from filming? Oh, man. I'll tell you a fun story. Me and Maria, who plays Cora on the show, plays my girlfriend, um, She's awesome, by the way. She's, we just became really good buddies. Well, we were both talking about our love for Christmas, how much we love Christmas as a real holiday. And we're talking about this our first day that we're in the van going to set. So the way it works is you're always you're in the trailers, and then sometimes they'll put you in a little cast van, and then you drive over to where you're going to shoot, you know? So we get to, we're talking. We're getting to know each other. We're chatting about how much we love Christmas. And then we turn the corner – to go to the street we're actually shooting and it was all lit up just christmas lights and it was out of a tv show you know like <laughs> it, was, it looked like and we both just stopped and we we're like 
oh my gosh, this is awesome. <laughs> and we both had this very uh, geeking out moment about our Christmas show. And that's, I think, how we felt every day because we were shooting this Christmas show in like October. So we got an extra few months of Christmas out of it. <laughs> that's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I... um had a teacher who I'd always like every time it was on I'd always go in and I'd tell him about it and <laughs> um he hadn't um watched uh, watched it yet but he would like let me just tell him about it so I just talked to him about it every day <laughs> I love that Kate okay, what do you remember from the show give me one memory that you have from the Moody's Oh, What's something that you remember? Um, well, uh, two of our cousins were visiting. Um, and I remember the first um, night it was on, we watched it the next day. And I just remember watching it with my mom and my sister and our cousin. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I love that you watched it with your family. Was that your cousin Marco, maybe? Maybe maybe a little bit like cousin Marco. Yeah. Not too much, though. Only a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was, um, yeah, I was telling, um, he he's not my teacher anymore because it was just a semester class, but I still, I go and bug him pretty much every day so um, and I was telling him that I get to interview you and I was like he's from the Moody's and um and he got like really excited he was like you love that show that's awesome <laughs> nice get some connectivity yeah. issues Josh I don't oh, know if you, you can froze. hear us there you there are there we go no yeah. I, I you froze for a second but we're back all right <laughs> So. Well, tell your teacher, hey, make sure, Maya, make sure to tell your teacher, because I heard what you said. Make sure you tell your teacher I said hello, okay? Okay. Tell, him, tell him cousin Marco says hello. Okay, I will. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you start as Damien and AJ and the Queen. Um, mm -hmm. So how did that opportunity um, come about, and what is it like working with RuPaul? Well, the opportunity came about just with an audition, you know, it was called one day. I was, uh, at the time, I was working on Orange is the New Black, and uh, they called over and said, hey, you want to audition for the show? I read that script, and after the first scene, I knew that it was something that I wanted to do. And My character wasn't even in that first scene, but I knew it was something that was going to be special, and I knew I wanted to be a part of it. Um, and I really enjoy it. I'm really proud of it. I'm really happy that uh, people are enjoying it and they get to go on this fun ride with us, with me and Rue. And working with Rue was the best. I loved him. That's my partner in crime. That's my guy right there. He works, his, he, he, he works so hard and he, he treats everybody around him with kindness and makes us all feel like we're one team and just so much love and support coming from him that it's infectious. And uh, I just wanted to do a good job. I wanted to make him proud. I wanted to make my cast proud, my, my, my bosses, my friends, my family. And I'm just really proud of it. I'm real happy with it. Cool. Yeah, I love that show. <laughs> Thanks, Maya. <laughs> um, yeah, so you've guest starred in so many shows like God Friended Me and The Good Cop. And mm -hmm. you were also in the show Sirens and the fifth season of Arrow. Um, of all the characters you've played, is there one that you've related to the most? Hmm. That's a good question. I think the truth is, is that I kind of relate to all of them. To be honest, you know, like with each character, you, you're you're taking as much of you as you need to put inside a character so that they're believable. So with every character that I've played, whether they be somebody like Billy Cepeda on Sirens, who 
who um, maybe is a little slow to understand some things. You know, he's kind of like a golden retriever, very similar <laughs> to Marco, you know, uh, where he may be considered a little ditzy sometimes, you know. But to him, you know, I, I don't he, he doesn't think he's any of those things. He's just trying to be sweet and make make sense of the things that he doesn't understand. You know, that I think that they're curious and I'm curious, you know, I, I Sometimes I don't understand things, and I'm pretty curious to understand them, you know. And then with somebody like Damien and Hector, and even Prometheus on Arrow, you know, with characters like that, they're they're considered bad guys, right? But bad guys don't think that they're bad guys. Bad guys think that they're good guys, you know. So bad guys think that they're the heroes of their own story. So where do these where do these bad guys get their drive from? And then I figure out inside of me, you know, um, Damien and Hector, he needed love. And he found somebody in Robert that was showing him so much love that it threw him for a whirl. So what do I take a part of me? The days where I felt upset that I needed to take him to a further place, I'm going to resonate with those things on days that I feel like I need love, you know. And, and I look to my wife. I look to my friends, my parents, you know. <laughs> There are times where I feel like I'm not very good at anything, you know, I feel like I feel like I'm not very good at what I do or I have nothing to offer and I rely on the people around me to tell me that I did well that day or my wife to tell me that she loves me or my boys, my sons to run up and hug me and that makes me feel like I'm validated. So I take those parts of me and I put them inside my characters. So I think I resonate with all of them. But uh, my friends tell me that I'm most like I think Billy from Sirens or Marco, maybe, you know, a little goofy, you know, I, I love going to basketball games, you know, yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, so you've done comedy, drama, thrillers, and theater. Is there one that you like more than the other or do you or um, yeah. sorry, uh, do you, is the one that you like more than the other, or do you like them all equally? Yeah, I do feel like I like them all equally, but there are days where some are easier than others, right? You know, yeah. when you're doing something that's, uh, you know, like a thriller, there are some really intense, intense days. You know, there was an episode I did on Arrow where me and Oliver were inside of the cage and I was trying to get him to confess. That day was a tough day on Steve because he was chained up in those shackles and he was breaking out of them and we were intense, man. I remember being so sore in my shoulder and my necks because I was so tense from all the screaming that we were doing. But we knew that we wanted to get it right. And that's what that scene was. It was the culmination of all the tension that we had. So there's a day like that. And then you have a day on a comedy where you're laughing your butt off all day. Or there might be a day where you're trying to hit a certain joke and it's not landing the right way. Because comedy is like music, you know, where you have to hit the right notes so that that way the joke makes sense, you know. And those days... They can get your brain going too, but I love them all. In truth, I love being on stage. I love, you know, I, the crafts are similar, but different, you know, okay. but each one is, is a challenge in and of itself. And uh, I have a lot of fun. I'll tell you what I have the most fun doing, doing a little bit of each as long as we go, you know, doing a comedy and then doing a thriller, going to the stage, going to do a musical, going to do a, a, a drama. I want to do it all. Nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so uh, you guest starred in the um, crime thriller show, The Following. I with, did. You did um, your research, Maya. <laughs> I like this. I like this. <laughs> um, yeah, with Kevin Bacon, Michael Ely, and Sean Ashmore. Uh, what drew you to the project? Oh, man. I'll tell you the truth. At that point in my career, I was just trying to get work, right? So to me, it wasn't necessarily anything that drew me to it. It was a young actor at the 
beginning of my career and I was auditioning, right? I was auditioning for little guest spots. I was auditioning for, for, for anything that I felt like it was going to be moving forward in my career. So when I auditioned for the following, that was with the casting office that I'd actually gone in for a few times and I'd been getting close to stuff with them. And that came along and they offered me that part and I said, yes. And then I got to go and I got to play with Kevin Bacon. So I, I am zero degrees away from Kevin Bacon. <laughs> I fought Kevin Bacon. And I am zero <laughs> degrees away from Kevin. So nice. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> Hope that's on your resume. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It's the first thing. It says, Kevin Bacon presents Josh Segarra. <laughs> Zero degrees away. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite thriller? Hmm. I know I do. Now you got me thinking. <laughs> See, I'm, I, I like documentaries. So all these documentaries that are all thrillers, oh, man, me and my wife get hooked. You know, I was just on a plane, and I watched two different documentaries on Netflix. It scares me, though. You know, I like watching them, but I have to turn them off at a certain time or else I can't sleep. So, like, <laughs> come like 10 p.m., we don't watch anything thrillery in our house anymore. Nothing scary. Yeah, it no. goes either to a basketball game or The Bachelor. Right, <laughs> one of those two in our house. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I um, I was um, I had told my mom uh, that I wanted to watch the following, and she said she told me what it was about, and she was like, "So it's probably not the." best show for a person with anxiety <laughs> to watch <laughs> i was like probably not <laughs> so how'd you do did you like the following i did yeah were you scared along the way yes <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> yeah. me too those masks that they were wearing i got to see one in person those things are freaky man uh, yeah those things are freaky <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah, so, uh, what's your favorite thing about acting? That every job is a new job. There's something new every time. And it's like you're making a cake, right? And with a, a new job starts, so then they say, okay, here are all the ingredients and, and you guys are going to put this cake together and then the job is finished and you look at your beautiful cake and everyone gets to eat it and then you build a new cake. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I just love that. You know, I love, in, I love handing out cakes to the world and then if I get to make another one of the same style, like a second season of a show, awesome. But, you know, and, and I've learned along the way that you know, nothing is guaranteed, right? So we just take each job as they come, try to do my best, you know, try to really be there for my teammates, for my peers. I always say uh, my, my MO is if you give me that ball, I'm going to run as hard and as fast as I can, and I won't drop it, you know. And so I love that about my job, that it's always a challenge. Um, and there's always something new, a new challenge to tackle. I love that. Nice. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so can you tell us about any of your upcoming projects? Yeah, I'm doing a show right now called Katie Keen. It's going to be on the CW. Uh, that premieres next February, uh, uh, February 6th. That'll premiere. I'm in a few episodes of that. That's, I just get to go pop over there and play one of the characters, brothers. And I, I, it's a really great show, and I'm really happy for them, and they're all just awesome over there. So I'm doing that, and then I go into season two of my show on Comedy Central called The Other Two. That starts in February, so we're going to shoot that, and that'll come out hopefully in the fall. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm yeah. so excited for the new season. Thanks a lot. Me too. <laughs> I can't wait to see what uh, what shoe designs Lance comes up with in season two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know that uh, that dry erase shoe 
or that money shoe was a really good idea. <laughs> yeah. I'm just hoping that they bring it into real life because I'm trying to get some residual checks for it. You know, I'd like my royalties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so what um, personal trait has gotten you in the most trouble? A personality trait? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, good question. As a young man, I think I, I knew all the answers all the time. And you quickly learn that the people older than you that have more experience than you aren't necessarily out to get you. Sometimes they're trying to help you. Sometimes they're trying to not let you make the same mistakes they did. And I've just always tried to learn from those that know more than me. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, I always practice it now, but maybe as a young gun, I wasn't practicing as that as much as I should. And uh, it's good to be humble no matter what we know, you know, because there's always somebody that's going to know a little bit more. And it's not personal if they do. It doesn't mean that we know any less. It just means that people have had different experiences than us. You know, like I'm sure, Maya, that you have a lot to teach me. I really do. Just from everything you've been through. And I, you know, that's why I'm happy. I love that my job brought me to get to talk to you today because even just hanging out for a little bit, I feel like I've gotten to know you a little bit more. And I love that, you know, it's so for me, I try to take that into every scenario that we're in, you know, and that way you don't miss, that way you don't miss too much because if you're too caught up in your own stuff and you think that you got it all figured out, nah, you'll be out pretty quick. You know, <laughs> nobody likes talking to people like that. <laughs> yeah. Nobody likes those people. <laughs> yeah. It's a, a great life lessons right there. Yeah. Um so what is your biggest pet peeve? Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> biggest pet peeve. Okay. I've got a few. <laughs> I think my number one is I don't like talking during movies. Okay? <laughs> like if you're watching a movie, we got to watch the movie. Yes. All right. Yeah. If we're 10 minutes in and, and you ask me, why did they break up? I'm going to say, I don't know why they broke up. We're watching the same movie. <laughs> you know, like we're at the same exact part in the movie. I don't know why they broke up yet, but I promise we're going to find out why they broke up. You know? yeah. that's, that's, that's probably right up there. That's right up there. That's a good, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so if you could meet any fictional character, who would it be and why? Another thinker for sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you got me thinking, Ma. You got me good questions. I would love to meet Rocky Balboa. You know who Rocky well, is? Yeah. The boxer? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, he's actually played by Sylvester Stallone, and I'm sure Sly is awesome. But I really want to meet Rocky. Hmm. You know, I, want, I wish I could have been in his corner. For the first fight, you know, uh, I wish I could have gone through that journey with him. But uh, it's just I, I I love the Rocky movies and I've always been inspired by the Rocky movies. And I have a giant Rocky poster that was in my room for many, many years that we just put into storage because it's literally like a 10 foot by <laughs> 8 poster <laughs> that's in a giant frame. And, and we have a new baby at home. So we had to start maneuvering some things. But <laughs> <laughs> Rocky Balboa. That'd be my guy. <laughs> oh, cool. Rocky, that's a good one too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, what terrible movie do you secretly love? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a wrestling movie called No Hold Bard <laughs> with Hulk Hogan. It's, it's a while ago. It's with Hulk Hogan and a guy named Zeus in the movie. Yeah. All right? <laughs> These guys, this movie is terrible, Maya. <laughs> but it's a wrestling movie. And I'm a big <laughs> wrestling fan. So as a kid, all I wanted to do was watch this movie. And to this day... I still quote the movie sometimes, you know, I still put it on in the background. I have two copies of it on VHS and I have two copies of it on DVD. Why? No one knows. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why I have so many copies. <laughs> it's a waste of money. It's a waste of space. Just in <laughs> case. I mean, 
You never yeah. know. Just in case. Yeah. yeah. If, if we had a fire... I'd grab my copies of No Hold Bart. There and you I'd go. Leave it with my <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, who would play you in the movie of your life? Oh, man. Who would play me in the movie of my life? Zeus. I was going to say <laughs> Zeus, baby. <laughs> Zeus might have to be it. I'd probably ask The Rock if he'd do it for me. You know, if The oh, Rock yeah. would come. I know he'd have to cut off like 150 pounds of muscle, <laughs> and I know he'd have to like shorten himself out for about six inches, but I'd ask The Rock, you know, <laughs> he'd give me some of that rock juice, you know, that make him charming and charismatic, and I'd be an action star, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, if you could have any song playing to announce your entrance into a room what song would it be oh yes oh yes i mean i can't say rocky again because that would be pretty cool to have that 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 that, that, that you know like we were saying <laughs> earlier hmm how about okay there's another song in rocky called uh uh the eye of the tiger <laughs> it might have yeah. to be the eye of the tiger <laughs> it's either going to be gonna fly now or eye of the tiger one of those two <laughs> <laughs> or a Pitbull song. Maybe any Pitbull song. I love Pitbull. So it might have to be a Mr. Worldwide song, Mr. 305. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. Um, so, um. There it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go, yeah. I feel good now. Here we go. Yeah, you know that. that, 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 that. Perfect. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, uh, when you're having a bad day, what do you do to make yourself feel better? Hmm. I play with my boys. I play with my family. You know, I have, I have a three-year-old at home and I have a new baby. He's about three weeks old. Oh, wow. You might even hear, you might even hear them, uh, making some noise in the living room. For me, you know, it's... It's a, it's a quick reminder that what I do is only my business and my family is my life. You know, when I have a bad day and I come home, I could be really wrapped up in my own stuff that's making me sad. And I see them and they look at me and my son doesn't know what I do for a living. He doesn't care <laughs> if I had a bad audition that day or... If I didn't do well that day, he just wants to play cars. You know, he wants to go to the sandbox. And uh, I thank him a lot for that. He doesn't know how much he's helping dad at, you know? Mm. That's yeah. sweet. That and I say, sweet. I'll tell you what, Maya. I know I got to meet your mom earlier. And you get to talk to her. Believe me, you guys bring a lot of joy out of us. Because our lives are about you, you know? And... Uh, I know that's your mom and your best friend, you know, and my guys, they're my best buds. So when you're with your best friends, that's when you're happiest, you know? Yeah. When you're with your best buds, that's when you're chilling. You don't yeah. got to worry about too much, you know? Yeah. Yeah, my mom and my sister are my best friends, so. That's it, man. I call my boy. He's three. He doesn't even know that he is, but I tell him all the time. I'm like, you're my best friend. You're my buddy. <laughs> I talk to him about everything, you know? <laughs> mm. That is so good. Yeah. Um... So, do you have a motto or quotation that you live by? I've got a bunch. I'm always thinking about that. I'll tell you one right now, and I want to read it, if you don't mind. I'm going to look it up on my phone, because I've been quoting it recently, and it's not fair that I'm not quoting it exactly. Uh, I'm going to find it right now. I have it right here. It's a Steve Jobs quote, Okay. And the quote is this. I just heard it about five days ago, and I've been sharing it with all my friends. You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in the future. You have to trust in something. Your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. So what that means to me, you know, is it's... It's that we can look back at our lives, right? We can look back at our memories and everything can kind of track, right? You know, everything makes sense. And sometimes when we think about the future, it can be really overwhelming. We can be really scared about what's to come. 
Um, we can start to question ourselves. You know, I lose confidence. And that quote stuck with me because if you trust in your gut, you trust in karma, which is what you put out into the world. You trust in faith, whatever it is that you have inside of you, trust in that, the dots are going to connect. You know, we're going to look back at 10, 15, 20 years and we're going to realize that, oh man, look at all these dots that have connected along the way. Mm. You know, and we just keep leading with our gut. Trust what's inside, you know, trust the people around you, the people that love you and are looking out for your best interests. Those are the people that are looking out for you, man. Trust that. Mm. I like that. So do I. That is good. Yeah. Map, you guys like it. Nice. Uh, me too. It's been sticking with me for like a week now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a timely question, yeah. Maya. Nice job. Thank you. Yeah, true. Yeah. Great question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so my last question for you is um, who do you consider to be a real life superhero and why? Uh that one's easy. My wife's in the other room, and she just gave birth to our second boy. And I mean it when I say that that's my superwoman right there. That's my Wonder Woman, truthfully. Um, to see her love the boys that she, the way she does and, and have so much patience with us. I'm the biggest baby in my house, Maya, okay? <laughs> I'm literally the biggest baby in my house. So just to see her have so much grace and and still manage to show me love and take care of us the way she does that's my that's my wonder woman right there and i got her back her boys have her back till the end of time oh cool that is so good yeah good answer man <laughs> yeah thank you guys man <laughs> yeah you got really good questions maya this was really fun <laughs> i appreciate you. it yeah thank you i can't you. wait to do it again sometime all right yeah yeah, thank you so Ooh. much for calling in, and I yeah. hope to talk to you again soon. <laughs> oh, yeah, we will. I'll see you around the bend, all right? Okay. All right. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Guys.